Oh. <sighs> Why is YouTube disabling comments? As of six months ago, YouTube started disabling comments of family channels. Before I dive into this whole situation, let me just say, if you have been affected by this issue, I have so much empathy for you. I think YouTube, just to give some context, was a platform to create content. But not only that, but it was to communicate with you guys, an audience, and have a two-way conversation. When a platform removes a huge feature that makes it so amazing, I would understand why the fucking world would be so upset and, you know, broken. Does think that we can't communicate like we have in the past. Which is why this issue is actually becoming a huge national phenomenon. To the point where we're literally taking it to the federal government. If you're confused, don't worry. What I'm talking about today is the real reason why YouTube is removing comments and disabling almost 20 million videos. If you want to know what the future is for YouTube and how it will affect creators and influencers, all I gotta do is keep on watching. YouTube is now banning comments on most videos featuring minors. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jade and today we're talking all about what's happening within the YouTube community. If you're new here on this channel, we talk about social media growth. I'm an 18 year old entrepreneur and I love talking about marketing, but today it's, it's more of a sad topic. Basically last week, YouTube got sued $170 million by the FTC because of the Child Protection Act. I would recommend grabbing a snack because we're gonna chat about this together. As of six months ago, YouTube disabled comments on family channels. The reason why they disabled family channels is because they had children in it. And unfortunately, <laughs> and the government wanted to protect these children from getting child predators to attract them, so they just disabled the comments. This comes after reports that predators were allegedly using YouTube's comment section to share timestamps of when children were in compromising positions. But then speculations rise because at the end of the day, there are so many people that create accounts when they're under 13 years old and act like they're 21 when they sign up for social media accounts. So this can be literally in effect with any child channel, not just family channel. Which is why we're leaving to this question, why did YouTube really disable the comments? Because it can't just be to protect the children. If it's just for family channels, they should just disable all the comments of all YouTube content, right? Because child predators can lurk anywhere. On February 28, 2019, you open up your computer to find that all of your comments are removed. Jazzy Lee, who is a YouTuber here on this platform, creates content for beauty and lifestyle and fashion which has nothing to do with the Child Protection Act, technically. She's over 18. YouTube decided to disable comments on channels that feature minors. But I feel like what YouTube is doing is like victim shaming, I guess. Like they're punishing the victim for something that the perpetrator is putting on their videos. These comments have always been here. Pedophiles didn't just start existing three months ago. Jazzy is not the only one affected by this. There are so, so many channels that have nothing to do with the family channel niche that are getting affected. And this is hurting a lot of people. I know Haley Fam on her vlog channel, her comments are disabled. I've seen a lot of other smaller YouTubers like Love Evie. You might be asking Jade, why is disabling comments really bad? Like sure you don't get to talk to people but it couldn't hurt you that bad can it because here's the thing the way that youtube algorithm works has heavily reliance on engagement and if there's less people commenting some people are speculating that hey youtube's gonna promote my video less and for a lot of creators making content it's sometimes a full-time job and imagine if 50 percent of your income is suddenly just yanked out of you because you can't get the same brand deals or same adsense you would probably be freaking your shit out and for a lot of people who rely on youtube for income it's really scary let me tell you more the best way i can think about the ftc is kind of like a disappointment panda i'm not sure if you're familiar with the book called the subtle art of not getting a fuck the disappointment panda basically tells you the truth that you don't really want to hear you got less likes on your selfie last month? Disappointment Panda would probably say, Hey, don't feel bad. You never look good anyways. Your personality was way better. Or if you recently got cheated on, Hey, don't worry. You're gonna be alright. You have other bigger issues to focus on, like actually paying your student loans. 
Hey guys, this is my dad. I'm gonna quickly pop in here. I was just editing the video for a little bit and I realized I didn't explain what the FTC really does. So the FTC placed a law called the Child Protection Program Act. And all you need to know is YouTube is not allowed to collect data from people that are under the age of 13 because it's illegal. Regulators say that YouTube illegally collected data from children, used it for profit from targeted ads that violated the Children's Online Protection Privacy Act. A lot of people like lie about their ages. So it's so hard to track, first of all. So it's just like this whole mess where they got fined 170 million dollars as of last week because of this whole mess okay dad you're a, you're a parent right like if would you be concerned if your kids data is oh, getting tracked my god you really took a video oh yeah can you cut me off and try again okay <laughs> if i was underage would you be concerned that like youtube is tracking my data like is that a concern as a parent or you don't I, didn't, I didn't concern about the tracking part i just worry mostly on the ads well, family friendly for sure yeah but how do you know when they track it wrong? You're not supposed to place ads for minors. And I don't think the technology allow you to differentiate it between the minors and the adult. But there's no way to track like when that's I That's what I'm saying. It's because of there's no way to tr to uh. tell. That's why they want to delete it completely, which is for me that's a very very abrupt. There's got to yeah, be a better way. There is, which is frustrating, but Yeah, I don't know what it is yet. That's why they probably Google said that, you know what? They don't even know how to do this. Right. They're working on a new AI tool to track exactly. the pedophiles. Yeah, they can find it. That, I don't care. They're hurting the victim for what the perpetrators doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You Anyways, you get the point. Basically, everyone has a social media account. It doesn't matter what age. People that are under 13 lie and say they have an older account. And you are probably one of those people at one point don't even lie. But the FTC doesn't give a shit. It's just kind of like disappointment panda. Hey, we don't really care that that's an outdated law, but we're gonna all sue you anyways. So yeah. It doesn't make sense that comments are getting disabled for child protection, right? In reality, this can happen to anyone, and comments is just a, like 0.05% of a child predator way to like, contact someone. So this leads me to my next point. YouTube can't do anything about this. They literally can't just turn on the comment section because if they do, advertisers will pull out from posting ads on YouTube. And if you aren't aware, YouTube's a free content platform. Like you're watching this video for free, but in exchange, you're probably gonna watch this ad. And this entire content ecosystem is in exchange for us seeing more ads. So realize that contracts with, you know, AT&T or Hasbro are getting literally pulled out because they don't wanna get lawsuit. If they put ads on this video, they don't wanna be a part of this child illegal act. So a lot of people are pulling contracts out, which is hurting them, which is why the only real way to solve this issue long-term is if YouTube goes federal and has to talk to the government. And actually on October 7th, we're going to court. YouTube is actually going to talk to the federal government to see if this act can be changed because this um, COPA law was created in 1998. And I think as technology advances, we need to reevaluate what will actually move our society forward. You know, this is just unproductive because at this point, if YouTube disables comments and essentially they can't put ads, no one can make content. We're not going to be able to watch our favorite creators because if income's getting pulled out, a lot of people can't sustain the content they make. They have to go back to getting a regular job. I think that's why we value this platform so much more than TV. It's because TV is a one-way channel. But on YouTube, you can talk to your favorite creators. You can have that relationship and anyone can do it. It's, it's an open field for anyone, which means there's more diversity. And I feel like that's how we can find people we relate to. So in reality, YouTube can't do anything. And for the millions of people that are getting mad at YouTube, I personally, my two cents would be to just to imagine what it would be like to be a company going through so much legal battles. And at the same time, this is not even something you can control. It's something that's written in law. My best advice to anyone who's looking for alternatives, because at this point, what do these creators do? If you're relying on income on YouTube, or especially if you love your favorite creators, how can you support these creators so they can keep going? And this is my best, most important piece of advice. Diversify your attention. What does diversify mean? Diversification is just implying that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, that if something falls, you're gonna have a backup plan. So if all your attention's on YouTube, why don't you migrate to Instagram or TikTok or have your own email list, own your own data and have that sense of, you know, 
ownership because you don't want to rely on just one platform for everything. I've seen a lot of creators fail because of, with one algorithm switch, you could be invisible to the internet, but by backing it up, having diversification on multiple platforms and also owning your data, which I might well get into if you guys are curious, you will be able to be stronger, more confident. So when anything happens with a legal system or an algorithm change, you'll be prepared. Don't rely just on YouTube AdSense, brand deals, merch, have your own product, um, do freelancing, always having a backup plan and just diversifying your strategy will make you more sustainable long-term, which is super, super important because disappointment panda will come in in your life regardless, but as long as you're prepared, you know what to say back to disappointment panda. Hey, your AdSense is getting cut 50%. Good, now I can learn how to diversify my income. You're getting a lot less views than you did before. Good, I can switch up my content and learn something new and change it up. I was getting bored anyways. Also, people at school are making fun of you and your videos are actually trash. So why do you still keep going? Good, I found a reason to make content for myself because I love it and I don't have to please someone else. And that's the reason why I started in the first place. See, I think with any big change in the industry, which by the way, this is huge. Like YouTube going to legal is like quite crazy because this, this will probably be in our history textbooks when we're older. Right? But we're making history this very moment. When there's change in the economy, when there's change in our system, it's actually a good thing because that means we have an opportunity to solve that problem or be a part of that system. You can have so much contribution into this world by supporting your favorite creators, by starting your own business, or by contributing your two cents on an idea. Do you see that YouTube can't just rely on creators? They, they can't rely just on advertisers. They can't rely on legal. They need everybody's help to build something greater. And I'm not a YouTube cheerleader, I swear to God. I just really believe there's a world of crazy things going on and disappointment pandas i feel like we have to come together to let everyone know that everything is going to be okay if you want to see a whole video about how to diversify your income and your attention using your own email list or text message list i will make a whole video on that all you gotta do is comment below and like this video it will let me know trust me i know you've seen a lot of youtubers talk about like like this video but it will let me know i check every single comment so i would really appreciate it also shout out to the shout out to the winner comment on this post to be featured in the next episode if you want to be the next comment winner all you gotta do is comment below and if you're here already go subscribe to this channel and follow me on instagram i love it when i see you guys tag me on instagram when you're watching videos it's very cool to see because i don't know what's happening and without your engagement i would feel like tv i have been on both ends i never grew up with a ton of money and sometimes i think that all these good things are gonna go away one day. Um, but I know that what we do today has contribution to our future, right? Like I could sit here and be like, wow, like maybe I have some sort of success, but it's gonna run out. Or I can take proactive measures to, you know, maximize my success now to sustain me in the future and keep going. And it doesn't have to stop here. I think so often I remember I couldn't afford, it's crazy because I remember I couldn't afford even this camera I'm filming with. And a lot of things has changed. There's so many times where I was really stressed out and I didn't know where I was going. But I think the number one thing that kept me going was this community. Like no matter what, I could always watch someone else in my same place do amazing things and it's so inspiring to see i think that's why i love youtube so much it's like if i didn't see someone else walk my path i probably wouldn't take that first step and when you see other people creating content or making drastic measures to go to their dreams like you will do the same so i hope this inspires you like i know i'm just saying like i don't have money for a camera and stuff but like i know there's so many people that have different situations but i hope this says like for you having an idea just do it because you're gonna inspire so many people in those footsteps as well. So I believe that we have so much contribution to power. Why not make it today? All right, guys, I love you so much. I sorry I went on for a little too long, but I will make part two. Just make sure you like this video to let me know how to diversify everything. And yeah, I'll talk to you very soon. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Good.